Charlie Chaplin, The Early Years. Charlie's first four years were happy ones. He lived with his mother and half-brother, Sidney, in a comfortable flat in a pleasant area of South London. Charlie's parents, who were both music hall entertainers, had separated soon after Charlie's birth in 1889. Even though Charlie's father spent all his money on drink, his mother earned enough money to support her family and was a very good mother. However, their economic situation suddenly changed for the worse in 1894 when Mrs Chaplin became ill with laryngitis. Instead of resting her voice until it became better, she had to carry on working in order to earn money for her children. Her voice got weaker and weaker, and she began to find it difficult to find well-paid work. One evening, soon after Charlie's fifth birthday, his mother was singing in a music hall near an army camp in London. She hadn't been able to find a babysitter that evening, so she had taken Charlie with her to the theatre. Charlie was standing in the wings watching his mother singing an Irish song on stage when suddenly her voice cracked and went into a whisper. She tried to finish the song she was singing, but the audience began to boo and whistle loudly. Mrs Chaplin couldn't continue any longer and walked off the stage crying. The stage was now empty and the audience were getting more and more angry. The stage manager, who had been standing in the wings with Charlie, knew that he had to do something quickly. Somebody had to go on the stage and entertain the audience. But who? He looked down at the little boy and suddenly remembered that he'd once seen Charlie entertaining some of Mrs Chaplin's friends at a party. The stage manager quickly took Charlie's hand and led him onto the stage where, after a few brief words of introduction, he left the little boy alone in front of the puzzled audience. In the glare of the footlights and in front of hundreds of people, Charlie began to sing, accompanied by the orchestra. The audience found the spectacle of the little boy singing in the middle of the large stage wonderful. They liked it so much that halfway through the song they started throwing money onto the stage. Seeing a shower of money landing all around him, Charlie immediately stopped singing and announced that he would first pick up the money and then finish the song. The audience found this announcement very funny and threw more money onto the stage. Meanwhile, the stage manager came on stage to help Charlie pick up the money. But when Charlie saw the stage manager picking up the money, he immediately thought the man wanted to steal it and started to follow him worriedly around the stage. The audience understood what Charlie was thinking and, finding it tremendously funny, started to laugh and throw more money onto the stage. Only when all the money had been gathered up and safely handed to Charlie's mother standing in the wings, would the boy go back on stage and finish his song. Charlie felt perfectly at home on stage. He didn't feel shy at all, and danced and sang some more songs for the audience. One of the songs he happened to choose was the Irish song his mother had tried so unsuccessfully to sing earlier that evening. As Charlie sang, in all innocence, his voice sounded like his mother's, cracking and going into a whisper. To his surprise, the audience found this extremely funny, and there was tremendous laughter and more money-throwing. When his mother finally came on to carry her little son off the stage, there was thunderous applause. 
That night was Charlie's first appearance on the stage, and his mother's last. Soon after Charlie's first appearance on the stage, his father died, and his mother had to go into hospital. Charlie and his half-brother Sidney found themselves alone and had to earn money for food by busking in the streets. At the age of eight, Charlie joined a company of child dancers, and later played child parts on the London stage. At seventeen, he toured the United States for the first time, acting in a play. While he was there, he was seen by Max Sennett, the director of the Keystone Film Company. Sennett invited Charlie to Hollywood to become a film actor. He made his first film in 1913, and went on from success to success. He made the silent film classics *The Tramp* in 1915 and *The Gold Rush* in 1925. The introduction of sound in films caused Charlie some problems, but he still found success with Modern Times, 1936, The Great Dictator, 1940, and Limelight, 1952. He died in Switzerland in 1977.